Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of FSI DFS Fantasy NASCAR Picks. I'm your host, Mike Rotor31. And if you watched the Xfinity video, we did pretty good there. Um, it's a plate race. You want to pick guys from the back. You want to leave Stadler on the table. You don't want to play as much as you usually do because as you, if you watch the race, there are a lot of crashes. I think only a dozen cars finished it. So, um, and the ones that did wreck, that um, they still got enough place differential to be um, good. And, you know, I I had a good day. I won some tickets. I cashed. Had um, Greg Galding not got spun out at the end. I would have had a great day because I had some um, guy, like I had almost, I think, five cars in the top 10. Um, and then I think I had like, Brandon Jones, who crashed, and but he, or no, he was still in it. But um, I think it was Josh Berry that crashed, or um, one of our Clements. But anyways, they finished it as still top twenty, so uh, decent day. So again, ground rules here. Um, as we look at Cup, is you want to look at place differential, play guys in the back. You want to leave money on the table. So build lineup you like. Don't try to use all your money, and play light because again, there could be a lot of crashes. This could be a giant parade. We've seen many things happen at Talladega. So um, the one thing that I did do for Xfinity, which I will do at the end of the video, I didn't want to go into sensory overload because it's very, very, very vivid, is um, color-coded like some of the teams and some of the manufacturers and talked about stacking. So I'll go through the regular breakdown first, and then after that, I'll change the screen and um, I'll pull up the colors we can talk about uh, stacking because I got some positive comments on that. So uh, Denny Hamlin has the poll. It's been better at Daytona than here, but still 34 races here. Um, two wins, 10 top five, 15 top tens has led the most laps out of anybody on the board here. So obviously a good choice, <clears throat> but again, it's not a dominated track. So you don't need to lead um, a ton of laps here. I mean, if they do go out and lead a lot of laps in the race, then they could be in the um, optimal lineup, but it, it rarely, rarely happens. So most of this top 10, I'm, I'm going to fade. On FanDuel, I mean, it's a little bit different. So Hamlin, I definitely think is a play on FanDuel because I think he could potentially win the race. Almarola has won a race, you know, 26 starts here, only 11% DNF rate. That's phenomenal. Nine top tens, five top fives. And where it says practice, don't worry about that. This should say um, track rank. So I looked at their composite um, ranking in um, at Atlanta since it's been paved at Daytona at Talladega. So basically tracks that perform at super speedways. Uh, just to see what their average finish was. And then I ranked them. Um, and so, you know, Hamlin and Almarola did really well here. Gibbs is not, um, you know, did did well, obviously qualifying here, but uh, not in two races. Um, average finish 21st overall, like all the, the plate races, um, not good. So uh, definitely have fade. Briscoe uh, had the hand surgery. I mean, this track is not as demanding, but still four races. He's finished at least three of them, so that's not too bad. Uh, 18th overall, but I think he's starting way too far forward here. Blaney's the first guy I'd consider in a GBP potentially, and I'd only take one if you think that he can win the race. 17 starts here, two wins, four top five, six top tens. 23% DNF rate, but he has led um, a, a bunch of laps. He's not one that wants to hide in the back and be a back marker. And um, he's one that actually uh, tries to get up there and tries to uh, lead laps. Uh, Christopher Bell, 16% uh, DNF rate in six races here. I like him on plate tracks, um, but I don't think I plan as one off. I think I really would. Um, if I'm playing him, like pair him with other Gibbs cars. Same thing with Truex. Logano, on the other hand here, he doesn't, if you can get out in clean air, he's always really, really good. So it all depends on that. He's really good at play tracks. He's got three wins at Talladega. He's fourth overall in my rankings. Um, and 32% DNF rate, but uh, it's led the second most amount of laps here. So, 
definitely somebody to consider in GPP. Another great FanDuel play, too, that I'd consider. Um, you know, FanDuel is a little bit different. You're looking more for finishing position and laps completed. So you want somebody that's going to um, potentially make it to the end of the race. So Logano's had some issues. So I feel a little bit safer with Blaney and Hamlin. But, um, you know, I, I think all of them are in play. So uh, Larson, I, I apologize last week. I did not see that coming. I did not see him being a dominant car there and winning that race. But um, I, I know they've done well at short track. I just figured that he'd have another tire issue or speeding on pit road or something and just not be able to deliver. But he did. So good for him. Congratulations. Enjoyed the grandfather clock here. I mean, he could win this race. But again, I just think it's too... Um, too hard on plate tracks 37th he's not a great plate track play driver so fade for me and busher same thing uh 33 dnf rate um you know two top tens at least but average finishing position 21st so starting way too far forward harvick lots of experience here has led laps 15th overall only a nine percent dnf rate so he knows what he's doing keeps things clean 12th overall ranking so i think you can play him in a gpp general rule for cup races you want to start like 20th or 25th on back um it's i moved the line a little bit higher in truck in um expanded use because quality equipment but all these cars should be good and there's only maybe about a couple that might not be able to make it to the full um, extent so harvick's a good driver again if you think that he's the one that i think in this range here if you think like somebody can win the race i think that's why a gpp and play him bubble wallace has a win um i believe it was a rain shortened one at, at talladega but still you know he, he put himself in position there uh 20 dnf rate which isn't bad so you know he's finished eight out of ten races i think he'll be highly owned just based on that 17th overall but he hasn't been as good at daytona and at um at atlanta so again gpp tyler reddick uh i think he's gonna have low ownership he's not good on the style of tr racing um 33% DNF rate, so he's only finished four out of uh, six races, which, I mean, isn't horrible. But still, 23rd overall finish average. He did have two top tens, but again, I just, I don't think I'll be playing much Tyler Reddick. Austin Dillon, like a couple years ago, this would be like a great play. Uh, fifth overall, and that's just not like with recent form. This team just hasn't been slow this, has been slow this year and just really hasn't, figure things out so um you know gpp if you think you'd turn around if this is what he needs uh 19 races five top fives uh five or two top five five top tens uh 17th overall finish position starting 14th so you know there's there's some upside there potentially but i'm not sure uh Cindric, same thing he's won at daytona uh, 15th overall at two races. He's finished them all. So, um, you know, another probably good fan duel play. But a DK, I think it's a GPP. Uh, if you want to pair him with the other Penske guys in the stack, then, I, then I, I'm fine with that. Priest, um, six races here, 15th overall. Uh, pretty good DNF rate. One for top five, two top tens. Uh, 16th overall, my model, that's where he's starting. So, I think, you know, he's in play for GPP. Kyle Busch is always boom or bust. Like, he's always first guy in my GPP. 35 races here. Uh, only one win. Uh, nine top tens. Like, you think he'd have more than that. But it has led a lot of laps. He's not afraid to go out there and try to challenge and lead laps. RCR cars have always been really good on play tracks. Um, and 20% DNF rate, which isn't bad here. So I think I'll definitely be playing Kyle Busch and some GPPs. Byron, same thing. Um, he finds trouble. Uh, Childress is a good program also on these tracks. Uh, 10 starts here. He's finished seven of them. Only two top fives. So led some laps, though. So, you know, he's one that doesn't mind getting up there and running up front. But again, he just seems to find a lot of trouble. So he's going to be a, a GPP for me. Uh, if you want to stack with Hendrick cards, I'm fine. But I don't know if I'd, um, you know, we'll get to that when we get to that. AJ Allmendinger amazingly profiles. 
as like number one here and i don't know why his um track information is not showing up um i'm almost positive he's he should have something it's probably with something to dad not pulling it, but i'm not going to monkey with that right now but he he has he was decent here in xfinity races um but he's made it clear it's not his favorite type of running colleague is really good at running at these um types of tracks so i wouldn't count him out but i think he's more of a gpp play um i don't really love him for cash but now we're starting to get into the cash range and brad kasowski is a great play here i believe um hated him the last couple of years but i think he's really kind of figured things out um, he was really strong here when he ran in penske when he wasn't wrecking his own teammates um 28 races here six wins six wins 13 top tens he's led the third most laps um even though his um composite finish is 26 this i think is better track for him than daytona but 15th overall finishing position at 14 percent dnf absolutely love all of that um brad kozlowski i think is definitely someone that is um in play here in, in cash michael mcdowell really good at these types of races also even though you know he has a 30th for the track rank i I don't know why. Um, maybe some bad, and it, like it might be the thirty-seven uh, percent DNF rate here in twenty-four races. I think he's better at Daytona, but still, he's at four top ten tiers, three top fives. Uh, I think he's definitely somebody that you consider um, playing the front row. Of motorsports has always been um, decent on these types of tracks, so definitely somebody to um, to look to have success here daniel suarez um track house cars are, are have been decent here i i don't know if i like him um as much like in plate racing 33 percent dnf rates getting kind of high there it's only had two top tens so i think you can play him in cash but i think i'll probably have other guys over him i really like his teammate chastain better chastain has one here um i think he's actually the defending champion i think he won the fall race or maybe it was this race he won one of them last year here so um you know so he's got one win two top tens 17th overall and in eight races ross chastain ross chastain who's an aggressive driver who has made mistakes and has not many friends out there just because of his driving style has finished every single race. He's raced at Talladega eight races. That's pretty amazing. So love that. Um, we'll definitely have him in play. Um, Eric Jones here. He's really strong on these types of tracks. He comes back eighth overall, even though he's got like a 41% DNF rate, which is, um, I think he's probably another one that's been better at Daytona, but this might be his best chance to kind of turn the season around. Like Legacy Motorsports, like when they were petty last year, um, they definitely were, um, we're, we're much faster. I don't know what's what's happened here with this this, this program, but I, I think you know they'll figure it out um, sooner rather than later. And again, this might be his best chance to like win and actually get into the playoffs. So I expect like, a solid day from from Jones. Hopefully, he can stay out of trouble and um, get a good finish. So I'll be playing some of him in cash. Burton's a GPP, sixty six percent DNF rate here, thirty fifth overall. He. You know, again, like the first race in Daytona ended up flipping the car that was unflippable. I just can't respect him as a driver. I know that this is pretty much a Penske car and their other Fords are, are really good here, but he just finds trouble. He just is, he should go back down to Xfinity and, um, you know, learn some more just like john hunter nemechek drop back down just like whole custer drop back down he needs to drop back down and to get a little bit more seasoning before he comes up and parties with the big boys so uh i think Barrett will be very um little owned just based on on some of these things so could be a sneaky play but um i don't think i'll have too many of them 
Haley, I like uh Kali Car does well the style of racing. Uh, six races, only a 16% DNF rate, 20th overall finish. Um, no top fives or top tens, so that's a little bit disappointing, but I, I think that he's definitely got top 15 potential here. Um Bowman, not his style of racing, uh, but he does well here. Again, he's just like the kind of the silent assassin, like the vanilla ice cream guy, the blue collar, just go out there, does his job. And then all of a sudden you look at the standings towards the end of the race, and you're like, whoa, where does Bowman come from? He's just it's consistency. I know he's got a 42% DNF rate here, but uh, four top tens, 24th overall finish. I love the starting position, and even if he does finish 24th and does get into a wreck, that is still some positive place to French. And I think there's so much upside with him that he's going to be one of my prime plays. Gillian, I also like in the front row sports. Like He drops into the third car here. Um, Zane Smith took his ride. Second car, I believe it's probably the same exact car. They just probably changed the numbers and stuff. The crews are probably the exact same. The reason they did it was just because the um, – the other front row car, the 38, had more owner's points. So if for some reason Zane Smith couldn't get in on speed, he'd be able to get in on owner's points. So purely just a shell game, sleight of hand move, I'm pretty sure here. So I'm okay with Gillian here, um, 5,200, two races here. He's finished one of them, but again, it's not a huge sample size, but um you know, 17th, I think that I just like the program. And I, I if he did really well in the truck racing here, so I think it'll be fine. Chase Elliott will probably be the most highly owned driver here. Um, two wins, seven top tens. He's led laps, 14th overall finish, 21% DNF rate, which isn't bad. Um, you know, so just lock him in. Like, he's, he's going to go places. He's not a 29th place driver. Definitely top 15, top 10 um, could win the race. Noah Gregson, uh, again, I think he'd have a better shot of winning this in the Beard car that he was in previous to coming up to Cup when he ran in the super speedways. But two races, 19th overall finish, no DNFs. So uh, he's another aggressive driver, which mildly scares me, but I, I think he'll be fine. And I think definitely somebody that can um, will will finish above the 30s and get you some positive place to for a show. Austin Hill has just become an absolute master in this track and cup and Xfinity had a really good race um, today until somebody else took him out at close to the end. Um, he had the pole in Xfinity. This beard car is fast. It's good. It's um, it's got an RCR um, tech uh, alliance. So, you know, it's got good motors and, and stuff like that. I think he'll be um, highly owned 12th overall composite average. Three races here, led some laps, uh, 24 um, overall finish, 66. But I, I think that's just bad luck. I, again, I think he's figured some things out, and I think he'll be very popular and strong play. Ty Dillon is another one that's run really well here. Finished nine out of 10 races, two top 10s. Again, it was in better equipment. The Spire car just kind of concerns me. Kind of stay on the lead lap would be the question. But still, it might avoid a lot of crashes and issues. So, you know, in the end of the race, he might be perfectly fine. Stenthouse, so again, I think it will be popular. One Daytona, 19 races here, one win, six top five, nine top tens. Leads laps, 15th overall finish, only 21% DNF rate, which is not bad at all. Um so that means like probably finish like 18 out of like or 17 out of the 19 races. So that's um pretty good. So I, I definitely play some stunt house and it'll probably be popular. Corley Joy, I think it'll be chalky too. I don't have a prime play, but just as a cash play, because again, these spire cars, it's just sometimes hard for them to stay on the lead lap. It's a little bit better in the Rick Ware cars and um BJ McLeod cars, which aren't in here anymore. Um but, you know, I think looking at it in, in 10 races, you know, he's finished 9 out of 10, um, 21 first place. So I think he can definitely move up into um, the top 20, which would get you probably about 15 place differential points. Zane Smith, um, great truck driver, um, three races here. Really hasn't had a ton of success in Talladega. He's better at Daytona in the truck racing. 
But again, this front row motorsports is is a good team. He has really no place to go but up. And even if he does crash, um, you know, I, I, he's not going to get you a ton of negative place differential points and lose you points. So I love the upside here. Same thing with Riley Herbs. He's an excellent plate racer in Xfinity. He got wrecked today, but it wasn't his fault. Um, he number two overall in composite. I know he's got a 50% DNF rate, but just if I looked at like Daytona and Atlanta and like all things considered, um, really strong play here. Again, the Rick Ware card, can they stay on the lead lap or are they going to continuously fall behind the pack? But again, that could be a good thing. So uh, it, I think the thing is like with these guys in the back, like I think a lot of people will always stack like 38, 37, 36, 35, 34, 33, or maybe some combination think they're the smartest person in the room. It's just hard that, you know, if there's a lot of attrition, like there was in rocks, like there was in the Xfinity race, I think, you know, you've really got a strong um, lineup, but the unfortunate thing is going to be, is I don't think that's the way it's going to, go so i think sprinkling some of these guys in and playing some of the solid guys a little bit higher like lajoy um stunt house hill elliot you know the, the ones bowman with more established cars with better teams and better equipment even though the, all the cars are supposed to be the same here they're supposed to be parody um that's you know what I how I feel that, and that's why G, um, BJ McLeod and JJ Yaley I think will be very popular because people stack, you know the the back and and they build all kinds of lineups with them. But again, these guys kind of sometimes struggle to stay on the lead lap, and um and in the draft and that can cause issues. And they fall behind and again they keep on picking up, um places if there's there's crashes. But again, you're you're counting on attrition. And there have been some races where there haven't been, they've been pretty clean. And there's only been a couple incidents and a couple crashes and not the big one. And then the strategy doesn't work with some of these like lesser owned or you know, lesser teams. And you know, you work out, you make out better if you took some of the um more established drivers. So that's what I got for you again. So now let me just change the screen here and um, it's going to get really colorful. So I'll, I'll warn you. Okay. So we're talking about stacking. So you have three manufacturers in um, cup. You have Toyota who's red, who look, they qualified really well. You have the Fords who also look like they qualified really well. And then you have the Chevys who don't look like they qualified really well. Um, besides Larson and, and Dylan, they're 17th on back. I'm not going to read too much into that. Um, sometimes, you know, maybe they're set up for long run over um, short run speed, um, you know, different things. They didn't really they didn't have practice because they don't want to wreck all the cars. So you, you don't really know you know what you're what you're getting here so i'm not too worried about like speed or anything here um but the manufacturers tend to work together so you'll see the toyotas work together the fords work together the chevys work together there's again so many more chevys that sometimes ford and toyotas will work together um the two teams just because they don't have enough to stay in the draft with just um you know six cars and it ends up sometimes like with pit strategy and we saw it in like the duels and we've seen it in Daytona and Talladega where maybe one of the groups will pit early and then they'll try to get out there and try to, um, you know, get ahead of and stay ahead of the, the Chevy group or Chevy will pit first. So what well, group A will try to pit early and get back out there and, um, you know, put the whole, other group behind the eight ball, but oftentimes what happens is they don't have um, great pit stops and a couple of cars get hung up and they don't get out in time and they can't get back together and form a line that's tight to get enough of a draft and then they get passed by the other group and, you know, we've so... So again, I, I think, you know, manufacturer pit strategy has led to um, winning these races sometimes as much as um, of surviving chaos and, and individual drivers. So 
you have your Toyotas, you have your Fords, and you have your Chevys. But then you also have teams. And I know these teams look really, really colorful. So let me just like kind of sort it like, let me sort it by manufacturer. Actually, let me sort it by team first and then by manufacturer. So it'll look a little less um, crazy. Okay. So what I tried to do is I tried to um, put the... Um, the Ford's in purple. I should have just used different hues of, of green to try to break up the, um, the, the Chevy's. But what I tried to do is I tried to use, um, just to show you like, oh, so all the purple ones are Ford's, but front row is a group, Rick Ware is a group, um, Roush, Fenway, Stuart Haas, and Penske's um, a group. Joe Gibb Racing and 23X Racing are owned by Denny Hamlin. They're all under like the same pretty much tech agreement. So pretty much even though these guys aren't Joe Gibb racing cars are very similar. So that's why if you look at um, the Fords and Penske's Wood Brother ones grouped in with that. JD Doherty Racing has um, Hendrick Motor and Tech Alliance and so does Spire. So they go there. And then Colleague, um, Legacy, Live Fast, and Track House are all RCR based groups so they all kind of work together so if i'm stacking teams and manufacturers here's how i'm going to do it so if i'm looking at the chevys uh if i want to take and let me flip it back to um so let me start with the toyotas but the toyotas they're starting way too far forward. So, I mean, this is going to be a hard stack. Work better on FanDuel than DraftKings, but Bell, Truex, and Bubba Wallace. If the Toyotas go out there and dominate and they, like, finish, like, the whole train of them finishes first, that's fine. Don't know if I can get Hamlin and Gibbs in there. Again, I think they're starting too far forward. It's way too dangerous. This is, like, a, a risky GPP stack. And I think what I would do is I would think I would stack boards with them that are starting further on down the line and maybe use the front row guys because you have somebody starting I and again mathematically I don't know even know if this is going to work but I think if you're doing the, the Toyota stack take guys from the back uh, or like take Fords that might work with them and uh, put them in there so again risky GPP uh if you want to take the and make a Ford stack, I would go with Penske. So they're the lighter blue ones. So I would, I mean, if you want to get Blaney in there, that's fine. But I think the core would be Logano, Sindrick, and Burton. And I guess, guess Blaney, but I think I would definitely start with those three and decide if you want Blaney or if you want to, what other Ford group you want to throw in there. I think the better Ford group is um, to go with Stuart Haas. So I would take Harvick, Priest, and then um, throw in Keselowski and McDowell. I think that makes a really solid uh, Ford group because these other Stuart Haas ones are starting way too far forward. So again, if I was making a Ford group, uh, a secondary Ford group that's not um, – a Penske one, I would take Harvick, I would take Priest, I would take Koslowski, and I would take McDowell and start there. If I'm looking at Chevys, uh, Hendrick is obviously one I'm going to look at. I think Larson's too far forward. If you want to throw him in the stack, that's fine. If he fits financially, again, I didn't do the math on this. I'm just throwing out some combinations. But I like Byron, Bowman, Elliott, and I threw a stunt house in there at 81 and then figure out you know, two other Chevy uh, Valley plays to to go along there to finish off that stack. And then again, I think the other one is like build on like the RCR. Um, if you want to go up to Kyle Bush and throw in there, that's fine. But I think I would, would start with the core of Chastain, Jones, Haley, and Austin Hill. I like that group that um, are all like RCR kind of Chevy guys that should have the same tech and alliance and hopefully work together with, with drafting and stuff in, in the same group. And I, I think that's a, a solid one. So 
that's you know how I would do it if I'm playing some GPPs. These aren't cash strategies, but these aren't GPPs. Like I really in these plate races like to stack manufacturers, and unfortunately, the way qualifying worked, it doesn't really work well for the Toyotas, which is sad, and uh, the Penske are way too far forward. Um, but I think I can get you know some of the Penskes in um and unfortunately throw Burton in with that group there too and hope for the best. I, I think you know Blaney if five's not too bad of a stretch. So again, these are GPP. So Blaine Lugano, Sindrick, Burton, if they finish like all top five or or top ten, and then you you nail the other two like uh place differential value forwards to put with them. Um, you know, some of these guys at, at the bottom or some of the guys from front row motorsports then I think that really works. But I think the Chevys have the best chance for like place differential, um, uh, like the Hendrick and especially the uh, RCR um, affiliate stacks. Um, not necessarily. I mean, if you want to throw uh, Kyle Busch and um, Austin Dillon in a stack and then take two of the other ones and then two other ones for place differential, then that's fine too. So I know it's a lot here, but again, play light, don't be afraid to leave money on the table and, you know, try to go for place differential over um, guys that are starting higher up. So if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat below. Again, sorry, I, I cannot answer. You know, I got these five guys and, you know, what six guy finished my lineup. That's against the DK policy. Like, we cannot do that. So I apologize for not answering those questions if they're in the chat. But if you do have, like, a 1v1, like, you know, if you're like, do you like this guy or this guy better? Like, that's something we potentially can do to, to help you out um you can hit me up at twitter my 31 if these videos help you please give us a like subscribe to our channel see the number growing and growing and growing which is great um and uh share with your friends so that you know hopefully we can help them too if you want more information on fsi dfs you can go to the description of the video it's all in there and again i appreciate you watching Good luck in your contest. Hope you have a great weekend and enjoy the race. And hopefully nobody gets hurt. And um, it's we see some good racing and an exciting, not anticlimactic finish. So, Maguro31, and I'll see you next time.